Hello everybody, my name is Sarah, also known as Weight Watcher Cape Cod Woman. Oh, the light is bad. Um, and also, that's on um, YouTube. And on Facebook, it's Pearls of Wisdom and Food. What a concept. Anyway, today is Thursday, September 3rd, 2015. Not that that's notable, but... It's kind of current for, um, you know, me to be taping because sometimes I tape a few weeks out. But I had this planned for yesterday and I went to look it up and I can't find it anywhere. So either I taped it and wrote down a different name or um, the idea was there <laughs> and I never got to this. So we'll, we'll see how this rolls out. So anyway, I'm in about day five of doing my new weigh in to weigh in challenge and um which i will be announcing i see that i've already done my um video on it it's in the can and so after i have a couple of weeks of results i will be rolling it out for you guys and i'm liking it So, the name of this tape is Healthy Breakfasts, Health, Healthy Decisions, and hopefully I didn't tape something like this. But it goes on, um, it was interesting yesterday. Now, I've been having either my full fat Greek yogurt um, with the gluten-free granola and the almonds, which have protein in them too, for breakfast. Or I've been having my two eggs, and I have a dozen local eggs, so it's really kind of fun, with my three quarters of an ounce of raw cheese and um, asparagus and uh, my berries every day. So yesterday I had the uh, hot and tasty gluten-free cereal from Bob's. And not that this is anything against them, because I will continue to eat this cereal because I like it. It's hot. And I will have that with um, my ground flaxseed. But um, I found myself hungry after three hours. Instead of being able to push out the four or five that I'm able to do with the Greek yogurt or the um, organic eggs with the cheese. So I just thought that that was interesting because I'm definitely paying more attention to my mornings with my breakfast. And so that being said... I'm looking to find more ways to have a more filling kind of breakfast that lasts a lot longer than the three hours. But if that's the way that it is to be, so be it. And I will just plan my, my little jars of snacks as I go. So wondering if any of you noticed the same. I knew that with my, when I was eating wheat and I would have my high fiber brand cereal from Trader Joe's with my mix-ins of Kashi, that um, it didn't last long either, you know, two and a half, three hours, and that grumble would happen. And I was thinking part of that is due to the um, wheat and what it does to somebody's belly. So, a healthy breakfast renders healthy decisions. At least that's how I'm treating it. And I know that when I, when I do have my healthy breakfast, and I never go without, I am never out the door, I watch... Um, some of the women that I uh, work for and uh, the clients and I don't know how they pull them you know like if they're running late and they just you know wake up and they're <laughs> no coffee nothing no private time no no going to the bathroom nothing and um, with one or two kids and how they do their day after that because you know that, that you can't make up a nice morning where you can take care of yourself and put your thoughts in order and I do spend, as most of you know, a lot of um, crazy time in the morning, not only just doing these videos and emails and uh, the two um, sites commenting, but, um, you know, I plan my day. And isn't it nice to have that morning to just do a little, ah, and, and I'm lucky that way. If you guys have kids... Um, you may not get your moment until after they are well out the door. But um, 
for a lot of us, you know, we can wake up and take our time and enjoy the decision making of the day and kind of planning it out. And if I didn't have my post-its, I would be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs because um, that's my brain. That's my brain. So I have a busy day. I have to go to stores twice, one at 8.30 to get um, some of those um, sugary, the cake and the cookies and the cupcakes for a um, completion ceremony. And then I have to go back after the ceremony and shop for the um, daycare that we have on, on site. So I'm busy with those food things today. And then um, our three or four hour staff meeting too. So anyway, I have a nice day planned and my decisions, um, you know, are, I've made my lunch. I've got um, English cucumber and fresh peppers cut up. I've got two ounces of organic full fat cottage cheese. I have a baby bell. I love my baby bells. I have my half ounce of cashews. I have grapes, orange, I'll have to throw in an apple. Um, although I do have some peaches that are ready to be eaten. Um, so anyway, it's a nice food plan. And um, so I'm, I'm happy with those things. So really the only decision I have to make is what I'm going to wear. And I am that way about white in the summer that after Labor Day I can't wear white. I can't. I, I've, I wish I could. But um, it, not yet. I just can't seem to do it yet. So every year, and I'm 65, I just have that, I don't know, in, indelible rule. So I'll probably wear white pants because we're getting towards the Labor Day. So how are you guys doing with your, um, yesterday was Rabbit Rabbit with some goal thing. And Wilma, or Vilma, I don't know how she pronounces that. But um, what a doll. Thank you. And she said that she is um, making the conscious conscientious effort to go from uh, autopilot to manual and it's like oh could it be more succinct August to me was autopilot you know there was just no think time it was just go do repeat wash <laughs> and um, and so she said to slow down and just do it manually and pay attention and she's she's so true and she hit the nail on the head with the food and the tracking and putting the bones in and then with the yoga she wanted to up that and just paying attention you know and it's funny because I'm so broke I can't even pay attention and I know that people have said that and I know that feeling you know of paying attention stopping and slowing it down even if just for a second and so that's very important to me and I I'm the first one to um, let that go and get into the autopilot because it's what I know. And even though I had four days off last week, it didn't, it didn't do that calming thing. In fact, I was more behind because I took off Sunday, my most important day for assembling things, doing menus, doing inventory, you know, writing case notes, things like that. So um, I have another Sunday planned off and I'm not going to take it. And um, I'll just take more Thursdays off and have more three-day weekends for me. Um, so anyway, that was one of my decision-making things that I've already had this morning before my walk. So I'm very excited about our next weigh-in. And, um, you know, I'm finding that uh, being conscientious from weigh-in to weigh-in is, um, is good for me. You know, when you get, um, when you've been on the program for a while, and things get a little um, the same. You know, it's nice to just have a little bit of a change up. And, um, you know, the fear, of course, for those of us on maintenance is that we will stop tracking and first the ounces will come back on and then the pounds. And we don't want to do that. And we need, I need to stay fresh for those of you that are just entering the process of this journey that is so wonderful to go from, you know, feeling fat, um, being fat, you know, to, to just getting lean, lean in the head and lean inside the body. You know, I'm 
the, the important part about the fat to me now isn't maybe, um, well, I still have the, the um, I got the skinny fat pot thing, but, um, and it's all proportional, you know. Um, it was bigger when I weighed more, and now it's still there, but I weigh less. Um, but to me, it's that visceral fat that they talk about that is just embedded inside of the organs and just choking them. And um, I was listening to a tape about the diabetes, and, um, you know, the doctor said the, the skinny on the outside and, and fat on the inside, and how certain people that are pre-diabetic or diabetic, they may look skinny on the outside, like, how could I have diabetes? How could I be pre-diabetic? But then when they, I don't know how they do it, but they discover that their organs are just wrapped in that visceral fat that is the hardest thing to lose. And I don't know once it's there, if it becomes one of those permanent sort of things that's really hard to shake. And, but that's where the damage comes to your poor little organs. And, you know, the older we get, we want to protect them. And we, with our food, especially our sugar and wheat, we, and salt, um, we did a lot of damage to our bodies when we were eating unconsciously. And, um, and we can't take that back, you know. And sometimes, like an alcoholic with cirrhosis of the liver, sometimes you go so far in with the uh, overdoing and damaging that um, it is permanent. And so uh, the best you can do is work around it. And, um, but we can, we can lose the weight. And we can trim down. And if you're not ingesting copious amounts of sugar and wheat, even if skinny, um, you know, you can, you can um, take care of your insides as well and protect your heart. And uh, heart disease with women, as we know, it is the silent killer. And so there's more to being skinny um, with being skinny. And... Um, the older we get, those of us that are older, um, you know, we don't take our bodies for granted like, like we might have when we were on autopilot and maybe in our 30s and 40s with young kids and older parents and just all the busyness of everything. You know, we start to appreciate the temple that it is. And, um, and we can't go back and undo, unring that bell on the damage, but we can um, keep more from happening. And I guess that's where I am with the maintenance, as well as um, wanting to enjoy every bite, you know, having a density of my food. And I never thought that I would be able to say, you know, breakfast like a king, lunch like a queen, and dinner like a pauper, and really do it. You know, I was having that huge, this is, uh, my taste has changed. And I was having that huge salad with the bolt house dressing every night on the side of my four ounces of protein, three to four ounces of protein, plus, you know, more and more vegetables. I mean, you, some of you may have seen some of my plates that I posted on the Facebook um, pages that were Weight Watchers, and huge amounts of foods, and food, and I'm um, not doing that now. And I haven't had one of those salads in like a couple of weeks. And um, so the idea of lettuce and bolt house right now is it's nauseating me. It's so bizarre. And I didn't ask for this to happen, and I wasn't expecting it to happen. Um, but suddenly, you know, I've lost my desire for salads. Now, Greg is a mushroom eater, and he said he doesn't desire his mushrooms either. And he would buy, like, six packages of mushrooms. He would have, like, he'd come home from work, and he'd just, um, you know, he'd have his um, mushrooms with a little agave in them. He liked agave. He likes his sugar. And that's a better bad choice because at least it's organic. But, um, and so he would do that and all of a sudden he stopped doing that too. And um, I told some of you that he lost a lot of weight <laughs> with me on Weight Watchers. And he's eating smaller portions too. You know, when we get a one pound ribeye, there's leftovers after the first meal. We aren't having anywhere, you know, and that's before it's cooked. I'm having my three to four ounces, and he's having maybe four ounces, and he's not finishing either. So I think that this is just a healthy evolvement of how it goes. So I'm, I'm not having tons of veggies like I was before. And I don't know, this could change, but so far it hasn't. So this is part of my 
challenge. It's not part of my my um, new challenge, challenge number two that's coming up. It's just something that's happening and, you know, we're noting it. it it's just kind of interesting. Um, so, anyway, healthy breakfast, healthy decisions. And if there is a way that you can take, even if it's just five minutes, even if it means you get into your car and you just sit for five minutes, if you're lucky, drive to a beach. You know, time is so precious in the morning. I get that. And so if there's a way that you can do it, I'm a bath person. So after I wash my hair, you know, I can go a few days without washing my hair again. So when I'm in the tub and I have one of those great big clawfoot tubs, I can get in there and just kind of uh, do my day. So now some people, that happens at the end of the day. And um, that's when they take their ah moment. Um, for me, it's the kickoff of my day. And of course, my kickoff is I've already been up for three hours and walked and done a video and uploaded it and answered emails. So, um, but it's, it's, it's just how I roll and it's what works for me. So after learning and reading about the woman going from um, Vilma or Wilma, going from autopilot to manual, what a great thing to think about. What can you slow down and be aware of? You know, I know that Sue, the one that posts the wonderful pictures, um, Suzanne Muir from Canada, posts these wonderful pictures of uh, her meals. And they are, they are so divine. Those colors, you know, people say those colors can only come from nature. They are right, or Benjamin Moore maybe. But beautiful, beautiful displays of food. And she inspires me so much. Um, I'm just hoping that the wonderful taste of all these foods that we've had this summer keep going. You know, I'm just hoping that the tomatoes last and the raspberries stay as delicious as they are. You know, the certain things. What are your favorites? You know, what are your worth the price no matter what? For me, it's the organic berries and um, uh, the tomatoes, you know. So anyway... That's it for today. Healthy breakfast, healthy decisions, autopilot to manual, slow it down, think about it, pay attention to your food, quality over quantity. Have a wonderful day. This has been Sarah. Until the next time, bye-bye for now. Have a wonderful Thursday. Bye-bye.